And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Tikal 2! Sounds like the sequel to a movie. Um, it's just technically the sequel to a board game, although really, folks, there's not a lot of sequeling going on here in the sense that it's not very much the same game. In Tikal, you were intrepid explorers going around finding temples, uh, lost temples scattered throughout the peninsula. Here, you are intrepid explorers going into one temple and searching that temple. Well, I guess it's a sequel. I suppose you could play Tikal, and every time you got to one of these temples, play a game of Tikal too. Uh, that would take too long and be really ridiculous. Something I never am. So anyway, Tikal 2 is a thematic game with some really nice pieces, but does it add anything new to the table? Well, let's look. The gameplay has beautiful components. I mean, the board looks really nice. You can see everything. Uh, the box has a place to put everything. It's a really nicely designed box. Here's the initial setup. You're basically moving two things on your turn. You have a boat, which you are moving around the river on the outside, and that's to get to these spaces. Uh, when you move the boat, you will be taking one of these tiles that's at the beach where you stop your boat, and you'll be taking that and playing that. These tiles can do anything from letting you place a tile on a board. They can give you one of these keys. There's five keys next to the board of different colors. Uh, sometimes, like this one here, lets you take one of any key and gives you two points. They give you a secret passage keys that you can take. And uh, there's different things that you can take, and you'll get uh, goods, different goods that you might find, action cards. So moving your boat is important, And but the problem is, Every time you pass the spot over here, your guys have to carry the boat through the forest, which really is irritating, and you have to surrender a key. So moving too fast will give up these keys. Now the keys are important because in the second phase of the game, you're moving your guy through the temple. Now if you look closely at these rooms here, this gentleman can go in this door and into this room only if he has the green key. And if he has the green key, then he can go all the way up into this room. But he can't go through that door because it needs a yellow key. If that did have a yellow key, he could go in here. Let's say this room here, which has no doors, he could still go into it because there's a yellow door on the other side. So after you're done moving your person with whatever keys you move through, you're allowed to place your flag on one of the spots there and it will score you that many points. So this guy will say, oh, I want five points. Or maybe he wants three points and a special card. Whatever. If you notice these light tiles, they're not worth as much. This one here has only a single point on it, but they also will score points for each yellow door, not only in that room, but in any room that you have already have a, one of your flags in. So let's say I had a flag in here, I would get one, two, three, four points for putting that flag there. So the light color tiles can be worth a lot of points. Also, if you have a secret passageway, you can go through a wall whether it has a door or not. Or you can even go outside and go into one of these little places, you get at the secret door, you, you use the token to go in, and you get a lot of points from finding these little secret passageways outside. As your boat progresses around the board, you can also, if you notice up here in the top corner, there is a tile, and this tile shows you how much the value of each good is, and you can sell goods for points, depending on if you've collected those goods, and every time you sell these goods, you will also then rotate this, which will make the, the good price change. The special cards give you special abilities, there's different tiles, there's some rules to how you place tiles, but that's essentially what the game is. You're trying to get the most points. Uh, at, once you put out, you know, there's a really cool treasure room that goes in, the, it's the last tile to be placed. The only way to get in there is if you have a secret door passageway, likely, and or you can set it up that way, uh, or you can put it next to a door too, but Basically, putting out these tiles, placing them, and then running your explorer around, going through the door, and getting them. Making sure you have a good pile of keys to be able to move, because you're constantly using keys or losing keys. Getting points through various means. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game, after the la all the tiles have been placed on the board, is the winner. I like to count, too. I don't know that it's anything, you know, it's not like, Whoa, this is the greatest game ever! No, it's not really. I mean, it's interesting and it's fun and you have a good time going through. But there comes a point sometimes where you say, hey, 
This is the theme of going through a, a temple, and I like the idea of using keys to get through. But sometimes your maxim, you, you get the feel that you're maximizing points rather than exploring a temple. Now, that's not a big deal, and some people will like that because maximizing points is more interesting for them than the actual theme of the game. I would say this game is a good halfway point. It has a, a meeting of theme and then mechanics to get the points and being smart. There's some luck in the game with what cards you draw and how you put the tiles on the board, but there's a decent amount of strategy in the game. It's not a very heavy game. I classify this in the medium weight category, but it is one that I enjoy and I would, I, I would like playing games with it. The high component quality and great artwork certainly elevate it up. I, I like it better than Takao 1, although it's really hard to declare the games, although Takao 1 is just a cow, I guess, is probably a better game. But this one is still fun, and if I had to pick one to keep, I'd keep this one instead. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.